This video is only possible thanks to viewers like you. To support the channel and get more, go to patreon.com slash optimistic duelist and subscribe. Link in the description. Jake's earliest memories are of living on Hellmurder Island with his grandmother, a billionaire tech CEO who brought him with her while she conducted work research. Early in his life, the Condes murders his grandma and blows up his home, leaving him a semi-homeless orphan living in the globe that served as the top of his family tower. Terrified of the vicious, hungry monsters prowling the jungle, Jake spends the next several years holed up in his room, watching movies and talking to his friends online. Jake presents himself to his friends as a fearless, adventurous hero regardless, a narrative about himself that he wants to believe, or maybe him just mixing up reality with the movies he's watching. Either way, Jake's heart is caught between two conflicting wishes, wanting to feel safe and protected from monsters, and wanting to be a brave action movie hero. Enter one Dirk Strider whose first act in Jake's story is to grant both of them through the Brobot, who is designed to protect Jake from monsters, effectively allowing him to go outside again, while also stalking and challenging him itself. Dirk catches a lot of flack for that second function. And sure, Dirk does get overzealously into the idea of training Jake, but keep in mind that Dirk has good reason to think Jake would be down for this. Jake spends his childhood professing his love of adventure to his friends, and adventures, by nature, involve adversity. The need to overcome fraught and intense challenges, and risky, bold undertakings that involve risk of physical harm. Dirk knows Jake doesn't actually go on adventures at this point in his life, but he believes Jake when he says he wants to, and here Dirk is trying to make it possible for Jake to do so in a safe environment, through an elaborate roleplay scenario. In other words, he's trying to grant Jake's wish by helping him become the bold adventurer he wants to be. Dirk also catches flack for having the Brobot make romantic overtures towards Jake. Some fans have even accused it of being sexually aggressive at him, but that's based on the word of AR, who is prone to making overly suggestive comments. Jake himself describes the Brobot's behavior as tender, a term Caliborn uses for the brand of hyper-tame romantic smut he's into. That word usage, then, implies the robot was at best proposing to Jake, and at worst, rubbing his tummy? Even that much Dirk designed with Jake's words in mind, as Jake tells Jane that when they were young, he told Dirk they would be a great couple if he was a girl, unwittingly getting his hopes up. So in Dirk's mind, the robot is more than likely a gesture of young love. Kinda sucks for him, then, that Jake finds the idea of adventuring with the robot nerve-wracking and soon after complaining about it, distances himself from the idea of being gay, even calling Dirk out on not using the word pejoratively, despite being from Texas, which Jake apparently thinks is a place where gayness is distinctly not okay. This is also the log where Dirk flatters Jake's intelligence and asks him if he's read Rose's dense books. Jake's response is telling. He says that they were too sad, but that he lied to Roxy and told her he did because he didn't want to make her sad. Again, Jake lies to his friends to avoid making them unhappy or having them think less of him. Notice, though, that Dirk doesn't assume the text is too hard for Jake. Dirk believes in his ability to get through challenging material, even if Jake doesn't want to himself. Finally, in this log, Jake makes clear that he already suspects Dirk is romantically interested in him, making his negative view of the word gay and his avoidance of Dirk's hints on the subject that much more frustrating. If understandable for an, at the time, 13-year-old kid. He also tells Dirk he believes in him, though, a gesture that inspires Dirk to create the AR, a feat he doubted his own ability to accomplish. Given Jake's title, to me, this implicates Jake in the creation of the AI, and since he and Dirk are the two who bear the biggest weights of AR's attempts to help, I personally read this as a narrative about their hero powers combining to produce an offspring. Which, yeah, some charge symbolism there. 
This brings us out of Jake's childhood and into his adolescence, where he's had three years to get used to the robot and become a fairly competent adventurer. We covered most of this section in part one, so let's answer the question we left off with back then. Why didn't he just tell Jane what he felt instead of putting her on the spot? And the answer is the same as with Roxy's books. Jake doesn't want to disappoint Jane, but the answer just isn't what she wants to hear. So instead, he tries to have her give him a more convenient narrative to believe, where that isn't a problem he has to worry about. The biggest clue that this is what Jake's up to is the way he starts repeatedly complimenting Jane on what a great friend she is. Flattery is one of the page's most potent weapons in the quest to get others to give them what they want. Think of Tavros gussying up Mina as the Empress so she'll let him give her the army without a fight, or Horus flattering Rufio to get him to stay in a relationship with him. The latter example even includes Horus pretending not to hear Rufio's breakup request, and Jake too selectively ignores or even railroads Jane when her words aren't what he wants to hear. And it works. Jane does end up feeling obligated to lie about her feelings for him and talk to him about his boyfriend problems for six months. But it's not like Jake is lying to Jane the whole time. Despite the direct evidence to the contrary, he genuinely comes to believe she didn't have feelings for him at all. And yes, he did get there for self-serving reasons, but it's easy to see how. I think a part of Jake genuinely did doubt whether Jane liked him, even as another understood it as a fact uncomfortable enough to warrant action. That might seem contradictory, but again, marrying contradictions is a central idea behind Abraxas. And anyone with social anxiety can tell you it's pretty common to think about people as having all sorts of intense, contradictory feelings about you, both positive and negative. It's how I feel about doing YouTube. All the time. And it's exactly how Jake feels about Dirk. He outright says that despite his aggressive courtship, he still isn't sure if Dirk actually likes him half the time. I've been pretty hard on Jake so far, and I think for good reason. He lies, deludes himself, and plays with his friend's feelings to make things more comfortable for himself. But I want you to keep the reason for his behavior in your mind, which is his fear and particularly social anxiety, as well as his desire to avoid his friend's disappointment or rage. That's what pushes Jake to run from reality, and by running from reality, and refusing to connect to his friends honestly about the issues that scare him, he leaves his friends to stew and struggle with their own fears and anxieties, which in turn gives them time to build up resentment and rage against him. Until everyone's emotions build up to the breaking point, and he's presented with the most explosive, dramatic versions of his friends' grievances possible. After six long months of toiling away for and worrying about Jake's feelings, both Jane and Dirk, respectively, have had it. And so, just before trickster mode, and then during it, they let him have it. And Jake gets served. Jake is faced with his worst fear twice over in quick succession from two of the people he loves the most. And the aftermath leaves his self-delusion and self-esteem in tatters. But he doesn't have long to dwell on the ways that he hurt Dirk and Jane before he's thrown in prison by Crocketeer Jane, who devastates him further in his vulnerable state by verbally abusing him, tearing him down, and even threatening him with a forced marriage and the procreative slavery that implies, telling him that his only value is in his looks. And then he's taken advantage of by Arania, who exploits him for her own purposes and powers him up against his will. After which, Jane kills him for the crime of unwillingly messing up her evil plans. Now, Jake's been a bit of a lousy friend up until this point, but I don't think anyone deserves that kind of trauma in that rapid a succession, or really, at all. And for Jake, who so highly values his friends' opinions of him, it's hard to fathom just how psychologically devastating it's likely to be. Which makes the very next thing, and the last thing Jake does in the Game Over timeline, so moving and heroic to me. Jake wakes up to see Jane, threatened by the edge of a sword a sword he himself summoned. And he puts himself between them to protect her, just like that. Extenuating circumstances like mind control aside, Jane is still the character who has hurt Jake the most cruelly and the most undeservedly when all said and done. But to Jake, that just doesn't matter. 
Jake is able and willing to lie to this girl, make her unhappy for months, just because he's so afraid of facing the possibility that he might disappoint her. But he's also willing to die to keep her safe without a second thought. And both courses of action are rooted in the same fact. He loves Jane. He really does. And so Jake falls on his proverbial sword and dies for a tyrant. And it proves a heroic death, because the willingness to die to protect a beloved friend is a heroic sentiment, whether that friend is brainwashed and evil at the moment or not. And Jane isn't even the one he fell in love with, at least in terms of romance. Now we've just about covered Jake's life before Spurb and gotten a feel for his true feelings and how he handles them. We also have a decent sense of his relationship with Jane. But to really understand what makes Jake tick, we need the biggest piece of the puzzle. Next time, let's stride into the void of the Alpha Session and really wrestle with his relationship with Dirk. See you then. Till next time, keep rising. Huge thanks go out to my patrons for making this video possible. If you want to help support the channel and come join us at our awesome and growing Discord community, feel free to join us for as little as a dollar a month. You can also find me on the r Swap Reddit and Discord. That's all for now, so thank you again, and as always, keep rising.